Right. Welcome to another edition of GTN Coaches Corner. Remember, we answer your questions. So all you have to do is use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner in the comment section down below. Below this video or any of our videos, just make sure you use that hashtag. We'll find it. We'll be answering your question in a future episode. So on to today's questions, starting with this one from Clemen Sudigosh, and he says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, a bit of a different question. I've been wondering about it for a while. In your experience and opinion, where in triathlon does genetics come in? Is genetics what gets you from a 10 hour long distance to a nine hour long distance to the top of an age group or from age group to pro? Thank you. Well, I guess performance is a combination. It's a combination of genetics and hard work and years and years of hard work. Um, no amount of genetics is going to compensate for that lack of hard work and training and practice and skills uh, that you have to learn over time. Uh, but conversely, no amount of hard work is going to overcome poor genetics. Uh, every person is different and also their roots to the top are also different. So some people are going to have things in their background that really help them to perform well uh, when they try and hit their best in triathlon. And other people are just not going to have that in the background and you can't really compensate for it. Similarly, certain people don't have genetics which just predispose them to being able to absorb endurance training and get better at it while other people have to work that much harder to get faster at distance. I guess it's a combination of both and there's, it's really impossible to tell where the difference is and how much of a difference it makes. It depends on each person. There's just too many factors to consider. But I will say, if you hope to win Ironman World Champs, you better have the absolute best genetics combined with the absolute best work ethic because there's no shortcuts to that. Okay, thanks for the question. Next question from Rob Fetty. He says, Hi GTN, 80-20 training is what everyone seems to be saying works best. Run back slow at 80% and then run back fast for 20%. Lots of data about increased mitochondria to support this training. How come when I go to the pool, the coaches focus very little on slow aerobic swimming, but instead seem to focus on faster repeats or dropping time between sets? Isn't that the opposite of 80-20? Thank you. Well, good question because yes, 80-20 is the norm. It is the standard 80% uh, aerobic training and 20% high intensity training with very little in that gray zone in between is the most effective way for swimming and biking training. Uh, but it doesn't really work for swimming. And that is true because you will go to the swim and essentially they'll make you swim really hard right from the beginning or you'll do really easy training and it won't be anywhere near the 80-20 split. Now there's a good reason for this. The reason is swimming is technique based. It's not the uh, endurance based sport that biking and running is. And because it's technique based, you need to be able to maintain your technique at the speed you want to go for the distance of your race. And you can't practice that by going really slowly. Yes, you're gonna build that aerobic engine and you will get fitter and you will burn calories, so you will stay fit if you're just swimming in an 80-20 and doing 20% of your high intensity. But if you're training for performance, to be a faster swimmer, to be a better swimmer on race day, you need to train at the speed that you're gonna train, that you're gonna race. You need to have your technique dialed for that speed, which means breaking down that distance into manageable chunks where you can keep your technique for the whole distance. You don't want to be swimming 800 meter repeats to prepare for an 800 meter race uh, where the last 600 meters of that you swim in with a really poor stroke that is not in any way helping you on race day. You want to rather be doing 50 meter repeats or 100 meter repeats where you can keep your form the whole time and doing eight of them or 20 of them as the case may be. So you can keep your form and you can practice that form and that's why swimming seems so much more intense and it doesn't follow this 80-20 rule because it's technique based, not endurance based per se. Uh, obviously you need the endurance but it's not endurance based. You do need to work on that technique and you don't want that to fall, fall apart. Now you can swim easy but you will find often that when the coach tells you to swim easy, that slower pace swimming or the warm up, the easier swimming, uh, you use some toys so that you can keep that body position, uh, keep your form, maybe it's paddles to keep your arms moving smoothly and properly and to build a bit of strength, maybe it's a uh, pull boy so you can keep your legs floating when you're swimming easier. You do want to work on your technique the whole time, you don't want to be doing really slow plodding as it were in the pool. I hope that answers your question. Okay, next question and that's from Ed Seymour, he says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Hi guys, I've completed a couple of Ironmans and 70.3s. For these events, I've used 
plans, either from Training Peaks or from a book. The races went okay, but I feel I could have been better prepared. My question is, as I'm 53 years old, should I stick to the prescribed sessions or should I look to modify them at all to cater for being an older athlete? Thanks, Ed. Uh, well, there are a few factors to consider being an older athlete. Uh, a one-size-fits-all program may not take into account the fact that you are over 50 and an older athlete. In fact, there isn't really a one-size-fits-all program. No program is going to work for everyone. Uh, there are specific things to consider as you age and, and as you get older and you're an older athlete and you should consider these in your program. One of them is that your muscle size and strength will decrease as you age. And uh, this can be slowed by doing strength work uh, but a normal triathlon program or one you just get off the internet may not take this into account and may not have enough strength work in there. Strength work can be both on the bike and on the run, even in the pool with paddles on, or it can actually be specific strength work in the gym. But as you get older, you should probably be building more of that into your program. Your program off the internet may not be catering to that. Another thing is the physical cost of high intensity exercise, which may be higher uh, when you're older. It may take a bit more effort to get you up to those higher zones, uh, which means it takes a bit more recovery afterwards. And your program, again, may not take that into account that you're an older athlete. Uh, your recovery time may also decrease as you get older. So essentially after those high intensity efforts, instead of two days to recover, you may need three days to recover. And again, a standard one size fits all program may not take that into account. Uh, so you do need to think about all these things as you get older. You need to spread your, your sessions out. You maybe need to do high intensity sessions less often, add in more strength work uh, on the other end of the scale. Uh, so sticking to a program that is prescribed on the internet, a one size fits all program will make it easier for you to stick to that program in future and obviously slow the aging process as it were. But there are more effective ways to slow that aging process and uh, to get your peak performance out of yourself as you age. Uh, it, if you are concerned about a lack of performance from a one size fits all program, it may be time as you get older to turn to a coach who can guide you through your later years as you get you have to start fighting those effects of aging a bit more because a coach can more accurately tailor those into your program. Thanks for the question. Uh, next we have Vlad S. And he says, Hi GTN squad, I recently completed my first sprint distance try. Did really well based on my goals too. Sub 80 minutes. I had a really hard time taking on water and gel. Drank less than half of my 750 more bottle and didn't touch my gel packs. I tried drinking on the bike, but as I was pushing hard, I found it difficult to do so. Any tips? Um, well, the first tip is practice, practice, practice. Uh, eating and drinking while you're exercising and especially while you're racing is very difficult. Uh, it takes some practice. Uh, also, use the course to your advantage. So eat and drink when you're on downhills or on flat so you don't lose any time, You but you can pause and stop pedaling and slow down a little bit. Uh, what you lose from slowing down a little bit to eat and drink, you'll almost certainly gain in the back end of that uh, event by being well fueled especially as the races get older now, or get longer. Now, as the races do get longer, fueling becomes more important. In a sprint distance triathlon, you can be well prepared beforehand, well hydrated and well fueled, uh, and you can pretty much get through the whole race without eating or drinking anything. But as you get longer and longer, as those you get up to Olympic distance and 70.3 distance, you're just not gonna be able to do that. Yes, you should still be well prepared before you start, well hydrated and well fueled before the start gun goes, but then you're gonna have to take in stuff while you're going. The thing is though, as you get longer, the intensity also decreases a little bit, so it becomes a little bit easier to eat and drink. The bike is your best pet in a triathlon for eating and drinking, so make sure you're fueling well on the bike, make sure you have access to the right things. If it's a bottle that you can drink out of easily and that your bottle is reachable, uh, maybe even a hydration system where you, can only, you only have to stick the straw in your mouth uh, is the solution, but you definitely need to start thinking about fueling as you go longer. Uh, it is very important and there's no really substitute for it. You have to just practice and get, get used to it. Uh, but yeah, practice, practice, practice and you'll get there. Okay, next question, Matteo Derrida. He says, I was wondering, about around how many strokes is optimal to breathe because people always told me it's three strokes. But when I look at races, the pros always breathe every two strokes. Or does swimming distance affect the breathe to stroke ratio? Okay, well, breathing when you're swimming is about getting enough air. So you need to breathe as often as it takes to get enough air. Now, it's also about balance. And the reason they always tell you to breathe on both sides or breathe every three is it balances out your stroke and you definitely should be doing that. Uh, if you only ever breathe to one side in training, you will 
strengthen that one side more than the other side and eventually you'll be swimming in circles. No, you won't really be swimming in circles, but you know what I mean. One side's gonna get slightly out of balance, you're gonna get less efficient. It is more efficient to breathe on both sides. But on race day, it's mostly about getting enough oxygen. And that almost always, if you swim in high intensity, means breathing only to one side, breathing every second stroke to the left or every second stroke to the right, whichever your preferred one is. Uh, a few caveats to that though, you should always practice bilateral breathing in the pool when you're training, when you're doing the easier reps, because you do need to keep that balance in and you also need to be comfortable on both sides because a swell or a chop or even the kicking of a person next to you on one side might mean you have to breathe to the other side and you don't want that to be a completely foreign experience on race day. So to answer your question, uh, the reason you see pros breathing to only one side is because they need to get enough breath and breathing every three strokes is not often enough. Uh, they are swimming really hard, uh, but the reason everyone tells you you should bilateral breathe in training is because you should learn to breathe on both sides and balance that in training. It's important that you do that to keep a balanced stroke and keep you efficient as possible. I hope that answers your question. I hope you've enjoyed all these questions we've covered here today. If you have your own questions, like I said at the beginning, drop them in the comment section down below. Use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner and we could be answering them next week or the week after in our next edition of GTN Coaches Corner. Thanks for watching.